Hi, this is Ed Gregory from photosincolor.com and today I'm going to show you how to use the color balance adjustment layer in Photoshop. Theme tune. Do 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 do. Pas de bourre, pas de bourre. First, second, first. Bravo. <laughs> that was some ballet for you there. Quite sure why I did that. Um, okay, so today we're going to be looking at the color balance. Now, essentially this is another adjustment layer that allows you to affect color in an image. Really powerful, so be really careful with this because you can quickly ruin an image. Now the way it's different to say the hue and saturation um, adjustment layer is this. Hue and saturation edits the type of color within a color range and it can change the color or saturation regardless of if it's the in the highlights or shadows or midtones. Now, this tool, the color balance, essentially takes the, where it is in the range, the highlights, the shadows, or the midtones, and then it alters color within that. So let's jump into Photoshop, and let me explain that a little bit further. So here we go, we're inside the, um, in Photoshop, and the color balance tool here, let me just delete that one by hitting delete, and it's just up here in the adjustment um, layers panel, so I can click on that. Now, again, to find this, you can just go Window and Adjustments will bring up this panel so you can select it. You can also select it from this button down here. It's like a circle with a line through it. And you can also get to it via um, Adjustments and then it's in here. But I wouldn't do it this way because it's going to affect the actual image as opposed to adding a layer. So, here we go. We're inside and we've got this one selected. Now let's actually see what we can do with this. So the first thing we can do is we're using master. Okay, no, sorry, that was a hue and saturation. So what we're actually doing today is the color balance. Sorry about that, it's slightly different. So color balance. So the way that this works is we've now got a selection of three areas, the shadows, the midtones, and the highlights, okay? Really simply put, inside your histogram, so let's open up your histogram by going window histogram. Okay, these down here are going to be your shadows or darks. These in this section here are going to be your midtones, and anything just here is going to be your highlights. Really simple. That's essentially the way that this works. So, for example, if we were to take shadows, okay, and now we can see it's really simply showing me what colors I've got. So, I could go, for example, oh, I want more reds in my shadows. You can see anything which is dark, I've now added red. But what's important, if I go towards red, I'm reducing cyan. So you've got CMY, which is, you'll probably know that from printing and things, CMY, K being Kelvin or black, then RGB, red, green, and blue is what we use. So you can see all the different colors. And it's very easy here to visualize where you're going towards. Shadows, add red, okay? And let's add blue, simple. And then we could go midtones, Let's um, add some yellow to the midtones and the highlights. We're going to add some purple. No, we're not. We're not going to do that because it looks horrible. We're going to add some yellow. There you go. And then we'll hit before and after. You can see I've made a huge difference. Now, let me just point out here. Be careful with this one. Use it for global adjustments and definitely don't push these too far because you can quickly ruin an image. Now, Preserve luminosity, I'd always have that selected where if you need to. The reason is this, essentially it looks at the image, looks where the darks and the highlights are, and it makes sure that the darks are kept dark and the lights are kept light, okay, by doing this. The other one is shadows, I would be careful to use this. If I hit reset down here, I would personally stick more in the midtones and highlights because shadows often actually darken an image. You can see it feels like it's darkening the image that I'm not a big fan of, but using it up to around 10%, you can definitely add a few little things in to the image. So you can see a really, really powerful tool that you're able to do different things with. Now, I also want to quickly show you, let me just import my color palette and grid that I like to use. So let's have a quick look at this. So if we were to put the color balance on top of this, let's hide the background layer. In fact, let's add a quick layer and make it white. So I hit Command-Shift-N for a new layer. Then I'm going to use 
this tool over here and I'm just going to drop it in. It's going to make it pure white. Now, when I select this up here, let's reset this. Now we can see that if I go for the shadows and add red, okay, it's essentially added reds to my darks. And then if I was to go to highlights and add yellow, it's going to add yellow to my highlights, not to my shadows. And it affects all colors equally. This is not, a, this is not, Photoshop is not looking at the colors. What Photoshop is looking at is this, the darks, the midtones, and the highlights. That's what this one is referencing. So let's come back again here to the image and we can see what we can do. So let me do a quick edit on this and show you what I might do to an image like this. I'd go midtones and I'd want to lift the, to lift the red a little and I'd also want to lift up the blue. I'm also going to go into the shadows and I'm going to add cyan and blue to the shadows just a little bit to that. Can you see I'm only doing it a hair? And then highlights, I'm going to add a little bit of yellow just like this. So now when we zoom out, this looks really nice to me. You can see without and then with, I've completely changed an image. But remember, what I would definitely do with this tool, do all of your edits, and then if you need any final color grading that you need to do on an entire image, this is a great one to do. Use it globally as opposed to more specifically. So that there is how to use the color balance tool in Photoshop. If you liked this video tutorial, please give me a thumbs up and definitely subscribe to my channel because I've got loads more videos coming. Remember, if you want this image to practice on or any of the other images from my Photoshop training course, head over to photosincolor.com. The link is in the description and you can get all of these files for you to use. Um, anyway, thank you so much for watching. This was Ed Gregory for photosincolor.com. Theme tune. Boom.